this question. Thank you. I forgot to tell it where to put the recording. Okay, we're recording now. This is uh, Lynn Byers' uh, tips for packing your kayak. So, okay, I'm Lynn, I'm saying, going to. Pardon? I was. I'm okay, just. Gonna I'm say, just going to say. Go ahead. Go ahead, Lynn. Okay, I'm. I'm going to start the video, and I'm just going to give everyone a heads up because I have listened to it that um, the sound is not great at the beginning, I have no idea why, and then just suddenly it gets a bit clearer. If it's a real problem with sound and we've been in it for a few minutes, um, you can let me know. But uh, I just say, just hang in there and I say, I'm not quite sure why it's not so good at the beginning. And Lynn? I was just gonna say, I haven't even watched it last year when we made it. Um, I think there are a couple of things that I need to correct along the way. So I'll just pipe up if I have something to say. And please, yes, go ahead with your questions if you have any. Other than that, the video itself is only 16 minutes long. So we should have you out of here in time to watch the wonderful news of the world in short order. Okay, yeah. thank you, Kirsten, very much for hosting this and uh, doing all the techie stuff that I have uh, limited skills in and yeah thanks okay okay pull up the video without saying share first so i'm going to share my screen here we go share this and oh, why do i have to do that play i'll make it big in just a second here we go all righty And I'm probably going to mute. Hi, I'm Lynn. Oh, and I'm hopefully. Uh, hang on one second. Sorry, I'm, I haven't done this a long time. This is the first time I've done a video. So, what I want to do is spotlight Lynn so you can all see her while she's going on. I'm going to mute everybody. And Lynn, you can unmute yourself. And I'm just going to check on this. Okay. Okay. One second. Okay, here we go. And to give you some tips on how to pack your boat for a trip. There is no wrong way to do it, but I think I found a few little tricks and tips that might make it a wee bit easier for you. Uh, for starters, if you're packing from the car and you have a ramp to load to uh, launch from, then setting it up and packing it on the wheels and wheeling the whole works down works well for me. If you're on the beach and you have a falling tide, you want to poke the nose in just a little bit and that way you pack your front hatch and slide it in as the tide retreats, you can move it in so there's no heavy lifting in the end. Okay, I, am, I pack my gear in Ikea bags here, uh, one for the front hatch, one for the back hatch and then the stuff that goes in the cockpit or on deck. So this is my front hatch bag. Uh, a lot of people like to do diagrams. Uh, my approach is usually that I, if it has to go in the boat, it has to go in the boat. <laughs> so I don't make too many lists or diagrams and just work my way through it. I try and pack my bags up in reverse order because I kind of know what goes in first, what goes in last. You see I'm on one of these little kneeling pads, which I kind of like as a, a bum pad when you stop for lunch too. Uh, some people like to put use tarps, put their stuff out on tarps. To me, that's just one more sandy covered thing to deal with. As I'm packing my bags, I write what I'm putting down in the bag on a list and leave it in here. That way I don't fret, did I pack it, didn't I pack it? So it's all written down. Now I know the first thing that's going to go in there is going to be my bow bag, which is full of my clothes. I take two bags, two tapered bags. Uh, I put weeks, say we're going for two weeks, Week one clothes go in the front, week two clothes go in the back. And that way, if we're doing day trips and all my clothes are back at, at camp, then I know I've always got a spare set of clothes 
if the horrible capsize happens. These are great. They just go to down the end and uh, they fit snugly in there. I use a lot of compression bags. Some people don't like them. They think they're too hard and not maneuverable enough. I like them. I like them making things smaller and I just find it easier to pack. From this point, I sort of feel the space that I have and look for smaller bags in those spaces. I usually take a couple of runs at it. My tent, again, I like the compression bag. not to put anything magnetized in your front hatch. That sort of came through horrible. Oh, at your compass. Kristen, can you stop? Yep. Here we go. That, that sort of came through warbled from my end of things. So what I'm saying there is don't put metal in your front hatch if it's anywhere near your compass, which I think I forgot to put on the boat uh, for this video. But yeah, the metal in your front hatch can make your compass go all wonky and a good compass is important. Okay, thank you, Kirsten. Welcome. At the top, I like to leave things like my toiletry bags and my tarp. Sometimes you get there, it's wet. And it's always handy to get that tarp up. And that is basically the front hatch done. What about the bags themselves? Yeah. yeah. I had a question. What about the bags themselves? Oh, that's Morley. <laughs> that's Morley. <laughs> oh, Thanks. Okay. I could. Thanks, Morley. Yeah. Pack up your bag at the end. Everything will go back in. After. Also, most of the stuff in my front hatch is going up to where I'm pitching my tent. Oh, it'll all be in one bag. There we go. Pack your hatches because you will really always forget something. We want to, here's a list. I've just stopped it at the list so it doesn't go by. It goes by pretty quick. Anyone, any comments on that before I move on? Okay. Okay, now the back hatch. I start off with my two bear barrels. I know that I can put enough food in two bear barrels to last me for three weeks. Bear barrels are very handy. They're also really pricey for a giant plastic container. I keep a bag number two. The other taper bag. Oh, so, you know, I messed up a little there. That's what I do at the very end. I put a spare tarp so that if we get caught on a day trip where we need to uh, shelter, it's nice to have that tarp. And it has a string on the end of it so that it doesn't get buried 
in the chat. Uh, apples in the bottom there. Fuel. Boots, which I, uh, is just about all I wear in camp. Great for washing dishes. Oil, my kitchen bag, oh, I forgot, in the front hatch, one of those bags has rain gear in it too, which is handy to have close to put on when you get there. This is my repair kit. Um, I have all kinds of different things in here of nuts and bolts and uh, lots of Gorilla tape, uh, spare gaskets, neck gaskets, wrist gaskets. Uh, yeah, tent repair, boat repair, uh, dry suit repair, all in there. And that generally hangs out in the boat so that if I get caught as I was last year, with a broken rudder cable and big water, I can fix it when I get to a beach. Uh, water filtration. Uh, either will go in a hatch or stay in the cockpit if I think I'm going to need water soon. Tent water bottle. And this is what I call my last minute bag. Um, you're always going to forget something. If I was on the beach and I was wearing what this jacket would go back in my car. But if I was uh, trying to keep warm till the end when I'm packing up, then it could go in the last minute bag and I wouldn't need to worry about it going in the perfect bag in the hatches. The new gizmo that I got, it's a kitchen sink tray carrier. I'm not sure if it's going to be worth the bulk or not. I'm going to give it a shot this year. It was it was great for carrying stuff in, uh, but it, it sprung a leak very quickly and proved to be um, bulky and not that valuable. It will not be going on the next trip. What are you going to use? What are you going to use instead? Well, what I have is one of these, I don't know if you've ever seen them there. Uh, they look like a giant shower cap and it's called a kitchen sink and it folds into itself. So it folds up very, very small. But what has happened is the wires have broken on the edge of the, the, the fold in part that sort of figure eights and then folds back in. So it's still functional. It's just not as good as it once was. But none of us are. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thanks. And you can see that I still have lots of room in here. Lynn, how big is that kayak? I'm looking at all the things you're putting in there and you still have lots of room. I'm just like, how big is that kayak? So it's a bit of a cheat because it's a, it's a topless sport. It's 18.3, so it's not a small boat. But that being said, I have camped five days in Atahe, Greenland. So you just make things a little bit smaller. Um, yeah, it, you just, it takes a little bit more uh, tetrising and making sure you take advantage of all the, the little nooks and crannies in the boat. Okay, thanks. The back hatch. Again, don't put the hatch cover on until you're sure that everything is in there. Yep. On to the cockpit. Okay. 
this is a nice waterproof bag I have. A tote is wonderful also. Works for me. Here's my PFD. You can see I'm wearing my dry suit, and I usually have that on before I start packing. The shoes that I'm wearing are uh, amphibious, so I can wear them on the water. They'll also be great for around camp, going for a walk, etc. Now here's my PFD. I have my radio, my rescue knife, full package. I have an emergency light. I have my laser flare. I have a compass. Uh, I have another uh, strobe light and my whistle. I say my radio. Yeah. And this, this is something new that I'm trying this year too. There's a uh, definite wisdom in thinking that if you are separated from your boat, all you have is what you're wearing. So if I was going to be out in challenging seas and be concerned about being separated from my boat for whatever horrible reason, this is my bailout package. So I have some first aid in there. I have uh, an emergency poncho, just stuff that will keep me alive. I forgot to mention I have a first aid kit also in my repair kit in the back hatch. I have my spray skirt. I have my camera slash uh, phone case. I have water on board. Paddle float. Emergency electronic stuff. A helmet, which I will either be wearing or have it very close by. My GPS. Another radio. This radio uh, is a battery pig, but it has the distress button so that if I get in trouble, I can uh, pull the distress button and they will locate me. Long and a pump. So I try and get, it's not always obvious, so I like to have a also, what I forgot to put in there was my deck compass. And I'm good to go. Oh, water. Thank you, Marley. Question, Lynn? Yes. Um, the uh, water bladder you used, you just put that behind your seat or are you wearing that? I put it behind, I put it on deck and sort of thread it through so I can uh, get at the bite valve easily. Um, you know, I should I should invest in a, a camelback so that I have a water source with me. But uh, the PFD gets pretty heavy by the time you load it down with all the tripping stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm quite happy to have it just on deck and and have the uh, the bite valve handy. Okay. So in last. So Lynn, all this stuff that you have in the kayak there, how do you yep. how do you secure that? Do you have any bungees or Velcro or anything? I absolutely everything that I have is tethered one way or another. I've got, I use a lot of those giant uh, carabiners, and um, yeah, if anything has one of those clips, then you can clip it to something inside the inside the cockpit or else it's attached to the bungees. Um, yes, it's always attached to my kayak. I have been dumped in surf. And if you are, if it's not firmly secured to your boat, you probably will lose it. Thank you. Because it's heavy. So when you're on the water, put your water in the, uh, in the boat. Uh, I, some people like to keep water in their hatches. 
I do not because I've had it leak before and I just assume keep my hatches dry. But you can fit one nicely behind your seat usually. I have a 10 liter. Look how strong I am. That thing's full of air. I have a 10 liter that I like to keep underneath my knees. And also I put one at the front too. My back hatch is usually heavier than my front hat. So to keep my trim right, I put water at my feet to balance the boat a little better. When you're on the water, you can ask your buddies how your trim looks, if you're good to go. And yeah, that's about that. And here we go, here's the finished product. Don't forget to unclip your rudder. And everything is attached. I always do a lot of beaners, make sure everything's attached. If there's a way to lose it, I can do that. So I have lots of little extras here and there. Here's an extra bungee. If, uh, if I need to strap anything on deck for whatever reason, I usually have a couple of them. Electronics in the Pelican case, tethered in there, pump tethered in there, paddle float tethered in there, sponge, water behind, water under my knees, water up front, charts, GPS, camera case, throw bag, spare paddle. Everything's attached. I can't lose it. I might look like a floppy mess if I go over, but it's all there. And yes, that's it. I'm wearing a hat. Uh, sunglasses are there, so I can't lose them. Definitely don't need them today. And good to go. Let's see. Let's go to God's Pocket. Lynn, you got a question from Min Bao or Jing. Um, just wondering yeah. about the, the total weight roughly for all the bags that get put in the kayak. Absolutely no idea. <laughs> I really try and keep it as light as possible, but like I say, if it has to go in there, it has to go in there. So uh, I morally just flashed a picture of the carry straps that we use. So we will quite often be six person on a uh, kayak if it's loaded uh, just to get it down to the waterline. Uh, so that you know, the worst, most injuries kayaking happen on shore. So just make sure you use your friends to help with getting the, uh, distributing the weight. Is there any way that um, we can watch this again somehow and stop it and make our lists from yeah. your? It's YouTube channel. Oh, it's on YouTube. Oh. Yeah. yeah, this has been up since last year when I did it. So yes, you'll find it on the Cisco YouTube channel. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. There's another question on the chat, I think there. Uh... Oh, I thought I got Minbals, but let's see, what else do we have here? What type of camera case do you use? Ha. Huh. Uh, so I managed to break my phone last year. What I had, it's called a water shot. And uh, it was good for my iPhone uh, 6SE or an iPhone 5, but it won't fit my iPhone 11. So I don't know what I'm going to do this year for uh, a camera case. But I really like the water shot. Uh, go to their web page and you'll see what's the other one. There's a Canadian one too that that does a pretty good um, camera case for your phone. Life have, proof. Life proof is a pretty good one. Life proof. Oh, yep. uh, that's I, yeah. You submerge them. Yep. Really? Okay. Yep. That's what they're made for. Yeah. How much are they? It's too expensive. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kayaking. <laughs> they, they tend to last as long as your phone, though. Yeah. Well, my, know, my, my case for my uh, last iPhone is going strong and has been passed along to Deb Leach. Um, I was very happy with it, and it was kind of nice to be able to keep my phone on deck. 
because your phone has just, you know, I can use Navionics and check the eye tides and it's, it's really nice to have it handy and on deck. Uh, as it stands, I don't trust any case that I have at this point, other than maybe the Pelican, which is going to be tucked away. Um, yeah, I mean, anything in a saltwater environment is eventually going to leak or the salt air seems to creep in there one way or another. Um, but yeah, I was really happy with the water shot. It just, yeah, you know, the phone didn't last. Lisa, you've got something. You need to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. Mine is called an Aqua Pack. Yeah, I don't trust those. Okay. I can't. Keep, I can't keep a, a waterproof GPS out moisture out of that. So I've got a few Aqua Packs. I wouldn't put my phone in one. Okay. And and trust and like put it under water to take shots or anything. <laughs> really okay. rely on you know. Anyone else have questions? Oh, it was a pelican. Something friend is saying it was a oh. pelican case that had leaked. Uh, yeah, yeah. Generally, I would have my phone inside the hatch. Um, but yeah, the, like I say, the water shot case was great. It was very waterproof. I never had a problem with it for about, it was one of the reasons I put off getting a new phone because it was so good. But uh, yeah, because the iPhones now take every good uh, picture as, as most of the, the waterproof cameras. You might be better to just invest in a waterproof camera and not worry so much about the phone. I don't know which costs more now. <laughs> yeah. True. Lynn, you put quite a bit of water in your kayak. Maybe say something about how you decide how much to take. <laughs> I ask my buddies, how much are you taking? Because I don't want to be a bum. And then, you know, Alan, I leave them below the high tide line, so they float off in the middle of the night. <laughs> Lost a couple that way. Uh, the general rule, so our, our guides when we went to Mexico, when we were paddling in Mexico, said that they take three liters per person per day, and that's in Mexico. So that should be adequate here, unless you want to take a shower. Mm -hmm. As Asman is asking uh, where you buy a water bag. The dromedaries, the big, the, the water carriers, okay. uh, uh, lots of places carry them. Now, what was the one that came up on the Zoom last week? Aqua, Aquapack. There's mm -hmm. Aquapack and then Sea to Summit. Uh, and there was a Hydropack, I think. Hydropack, Hydropack yeah. was, yes. Uh, the ones that I have are uh, MSR dromedaries, MSR Cita Summits. Um, I also use wine bags. Wine bags are pretty darn good and they collapse into nothing after you're done with them. Uh, they're just hard, harder to fill. But uh, yeah, they're, they're perfectly sturdy enough. Uh, the taper bags, if you're interested in getting them, they are very hard to find now. The only, I went on a, a internet hunt today and the only place that I could find that still had the seal line taper bags was uh, trailexpeditions.com. Now Seattle Sports is now making uh, an equivalent. So they, they would definitely be easier to get a hold of. And I don't know why they quit making the taper bags. Maybe other people weren't as taken with them as I am. But there you go. And as a mute asked where you can buy the bags, but which water bags are you referring to? I'm sorry? Oh, we're just saying, as had said, um, where can you buy those one of the water bags? But I'm not sure you described it. I'm seeing up here uh, any type of the large bags. Uh, Mac? Mech, uh, Atmosphere, Valhalla, uh, all carry good brand names of uh, um, dry bags. If that's what you're asking about the waterproof dry bags. I think I water, I, maybe it's water bags, so the bags for carrying water. Yeah, those, those would be uh, called a dromedary and that's what you want to for. 
Um, I'm not sure if everybody seems to be really challenged for gear and I'm sure it all has to do with supply chains and the pandemic, but you could try, uh, try Hydropack, you could try Mac, um, Seattle Sports, REI if you're in the States, Atmosphere, Valhalla, they should go to their websites and see what they have in stock. And, you know, and at the end of the day, you could always try Amazon and see what they have because something is better than nothing. Uh, and as far as the dry bags go, uh, don't go with the super light ones because there are lots of things that will catch and rip. So go with the slightly heavier ones and not the heavy um, clear plastic because that catches on things and it doesn't slide into your, your hatches as smoothly. Yeah, yeah and the, the wine bags that we used for water, you can get them at some of the, you know, like Village Wine Works or Blanchard Street Winery. Um, a lot of those places will carry them and they're about $5 each, I think. They're not you do it your way, Chris. I'll do it mine. <laughs> What's that? I said, you do it your way. I'll do it mine. I'll drink the wine. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. That's how you... It's another way. Um, and the shoes that you were wearing, what were? I, I have bad feet and I'm constantly struggling with the, the right shoes to wear because you've got all this bulk at the end of your, uh, of your dry suit that you have to stuff into a shoe. And it depends on whether it's summer or winter or how heavy a sock I've got going. And I've just purchased from Mountain Warehouse some oversized um, uh, neoprene socks to go over top of my dry suit so that I don't get the gravel and the sand and whatnot ground into it so I don't poke holes in the bottom of the dry suit. Um, I can just zip out and go get one of those shoes. I'll be back in 20 seconds. Wait. That's good. And I think she was wearing different shoes in the video. And those looked interesting too. So we'll see what those are. Honestly, the, one, the thing that I like to wear the most is my Crocs. This is an amphibious shoe. It's a Solomon. Um, uh, they're okay. I'm, I'm never happy with my shoes, but uh, they're okay. My $6 Crocs are usually the most comfortable, the easiest to put on. But if you do go over, they will float off your feet and you'll probably never see them again. We all know what it's like on the West Coast beaches. There are always shoes and flip-flops and whatnot floating ashore. Um, the sorry, go ahead. I'm just saying the shoes that you packed in your um, kayak, you said boots, are they just gum boots or? Oh, they're uh, level six, high gum boots. You want them to be a little bit flexible so that you can stuff them in. Uh, like I fold them over and put a rubber band on them. Um, yeah, they're very handy in camp. Yeah. Uh, most people, a lot of people like the high top neoprene boots. Uh, even in the summer for paddling. Uh, and a lot of people like the low booty, neoprene booties for paddling in. Uh, it just, whatever your feet are happiest with is about it. Uh, if you do have something like this that you can use on shore, if you're going for a hike, uh, it's handy because the less stuff you have to put in your kayak, the better. The less stuff you have to lug up the beach, uh, and the, the lighter you can make your load, the easier it is all around. Um, a good old pair of runners is fine too in camp. Um, yeah, no right answer on that one. Yeah, you can go down to one of the um, like Value Village or somewhere and get a pair of old runners, oversized runners and use those on top of thick socks. Yeah, you can. Absolutely, yeah. Any more questions? Anything else on here? Oh, what was the brand of the boot? But you said that was level six. Those are level six. Yeah, I found some packable boots a few years back and we all went out and bought them and they were quite inexpensive and they ripped in <laughs> fairly short order. So sometimes you get what you pay for. Yeah, it's too bad. 
Okay, well, I think we'll call it there. And um, thanks ever so much, Lynn, for presenting. I know it's I learned something every time, and I hope you all did too. Um, if you have any feedback that you'd like to offer about any of the off-water workshops that we do, please email me or one of the people on the committee because it's um, always would like to do a better job if we can. Otherwise, um, I can see a lot of people put positive comments in the in the comment um, box. Thank you very much. And in the chat box, I should say, thank you all. And thanks all for coming. And thanks again, Lynn. The other thing is, if anybody has any questions that come up later, I mean, we always think of things after, right? I am, in, I'm, if you go to the Cisco website, I am info at Cisco. So anything you send there will reach my mailbox. Okay. Okay, happy okay. to answer questions. Yes. Okay, thanks. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye. That was great. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you very much. It was very welcome.